Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to start. I want to start, Mr. Speaker, by expressing the horror of all those on this side of the House at the events in Paris on Friday evening, and our continued solidarity with the victims of all the people affected by conflict and terrorism, whether they be in Paris, Beirut, Ankara, Damascus, or anywhere else in the world. Nothing can justify targeting of innocent civilians by anyone. We know that at least one British national has been killed and many more injured. Many British people live and work in Paris. Millions visit Paris and France every year. Can the Prime Minister continue what he was saying earlier in response to my friend the member for Blackpool about the support given to British nationals affected by the attacks and what the government's latest advice is in travelling to France and our need to show the best possible normality in our relations with all the French people? Prime Minister. Well, first of all, can I thank the Leader of the Opposition for his remarks and say what a um, pleasure it was to be uh, with him last night at the England-France football match, where I thought there was a tremendous display of solidarity. Uh, I don't, uh, I'm sure they can sing the Marseillaise louder in the Stade de France, but I think we did a pretty good job yesterday, and I was proud to be there. Um, uh, I think he's absolutely right to say there is never any justification for terrorism, and we should all be clear about that right across the House at all times. He asked specifically about what more we can do to help British people caught up in these problems. I think Peter Ricketts, our ambassador in France, has done a brilliant job with his staff, and uh, I've been keeping my eye closely on the consular situation, and I think everything that can be done is being done. In terms of our travel advice, it's all there on the Foreign Office website, but I agree with him. The most important thing is for people to carry on with their lives. It's very important that Eurostar continues to function, the flights continue to go, that people continue to travel, to enjoy London, to enjoy Paris, and to carry on going about our business. As we do so, yes, we need enhanced security, and that is happening with the way that the police are acting here in the UK and elsewhere. But one of the ways to defeat terrorism is to show them that we will not be cowed. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We know that, sadly, after such atrocities as we've seen, intolerance often increases. Islamophobia, anti-Semitism and, ra and racism. Will the Prime Minister agree with me that it's vital that everyone in public life, particularly we as politicians, are careful how we discuss these issues? And will he also join with me in making it very clear that the dreadful events of terrorism in Paris have nothing in common whatsoever with the two million British Muslims in this country who are as appalled as anyone else by the events in Paris last Friday. Yeah. I'm happy to join the right and gentleman in that. In fact, some of the strongest and best statements following the Paris attacks have been made by a whole series of British Muslims coming together to say that these attacks are in no way carried out in their name. But I do think, and we've talked about this yesterday, it raises an important issue, which is it cannot be said often enough that these butchers of ISIL are no reflection of the true religion of Islam, which is a religion of peace. But at the same time, we do have to recognize that whether these terrorists are in Tunisia or in Egypt or in Paris or in London, they spout the same bile that they claim comes from the religion of Islam. And that is why we have to take apart what they say and prove that's not the case. But it's not good enough to say there's no connection between these terrorists and Islam. They're making a connection. We need to prove it's not right. And as we do so, the support of Muslim communities, Muslim scholars, is absolutely vital, and I commend them for their work. Yeah. Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Surely a crucial way to help defeat ISIL is to cut off its funding, its supply of arms, and its trade. Can I press the Prime Minister to ensure that our allies in the region, indeed all countries in the region, are doing all they can to clamp down on individuals and institutions in their countries who are providing ISIL with vital infrastructure? Will he, through the European Union and other for forums if necessary, consider sanctions against those banks and companies and, if necessary, countries who turn a blind eye to financial dealings with ISIL which assist them in their work? No, well, we do play a leading role, as I said yesterday, in making sure that the supply of money and weapons and support is cut off. But I think we should be clear about where ISIL got their money from originally. What happened was that because we didn't have a, a government in Iraq that effectively represented all of its people, and because in Syria you have a leader who is butchering his own people, ISIL was able to get hold of oil, get hold of weapons, get hold of terror. 
territory, get hold of banks, and it's that that they've been able to use uh, in order to fund their hatred and their violence. And so we cannot dodge forever the question of how to degrade and destroy ISIL, both in Iraq and in Syria. And that's why I'll be setting out my response to the Foreign Affairs Select Committee. So yes, go after the money, go after the banks, cut off their supplies, but don't make that a substitute for the action that's required to beat these people where they are. Yeah.